He is reshaping life on Earth and possibly life <laughs> off Earth as well. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Elon Musk success secrets. You are, not to put too fine a point on it, the richest man in the history of the world and arguably the most influential. Um, and yet you tweet freely and playfully and yes. somewhat mischievously. I, um, yes, that's, that's, that's accurate. For this list, we're looking at how Elon has managed to build his galaxy-spanning business empire. Let us know in the comments which of these tips you'll be taking on board. Number 10. Optimize your time. Leading so many different companies means you've got to manage your time extremely effectively. And Elon has a specific method called time boxing to ensure he stays on top of things. I think a lot of people think I, I must spend a lot of time with media or, or on businessy things, but actually almost, uh, almost all my time, like 80% of it is spent on engineering and design. I engineering and design. So it's um, developing next generation product. At, that's 80% of it. This means that instead of making a to-do list of various tasks that need to be completed, he gives himself allotted amounts of time in which to do things, which enables more efficient planning. The way I generally do it is I'll be uh, working at SpaceX on Monday and then Monday night fly to the Bay Area, uh, spend Tuesday and Wednesday in the Bay Area, then at, at Tesla and then fly back on Wednesday night spend Thursday and Friday at SpaceX. Um, in, in, in the last several months, then I, I would fly back here on a Saturday um, and either spend Saturday and Sunday at Tesla uh, or spend Saturday at Tesla and Sunday at SpaceX. You'll start the day thinking about exactly how much time it takes to complete a task, and it removes the leeway you might otherwise have to get stuck procrastinating. He also makes sure to prioritize. An organizational tip that anybody can use, whether they manage a dozen companies or none at all. If you do simple math, say like, okay, if somebody else is working 50 hours and you're working 100, uh, you'll get twice as done as much done in the course of a year as the, as, uh, the other company. Number nine, do good. Yeah, I've got to scale up production. I've got to make the car compelling. Make it better than gasoline or diesel cars. When you get down to brass tacks, Musk's companies have altruistic goals at heart. SpaceX wants to forge a new home for humanity in the stars, while Tesla wants to remove our dependence on gasoline and other fossil fuels. What, what, what I've tried to do um, is, is to try to be helpful in accelerating the transition to sustainable energy. Um, on the production side with, with solar power, um, I, feel, I feel strongly that solar power will be the single largest source of sustainable energy. If you always aim to do good and help people in all your endeavors, you can't go too wrong. This applies to ventures both big and small. Not everybody can start a company that builds rockets to take us into outer space, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't all work for the betterment of humankind. Like many super smart people have tried to do this before and, and no one has succeeded. And most of the time they've just given up partway through. Um, but, okay. but if full and rapid reusability can be achieved, it reduces the cost of access to orbit by um, a factor of 100 or more. After all, Tesla's namesake is Nikola Tesla, the scientist who wanted to bring safe electricity to the masses. That's a legacy anybody would be proud to share. Number eight, don't fear failure. It's only natural to be afraid of doing something wrong and falling flat on your face. But in order to one day be successful, you need to embrace failure. Failure is essentially irrelevant unless it is catastrophic. Instead of seeing failure as a disaster that cannot be recovered from, see it as a learning experience. Each time you fail, you acquire more and more tools that will help you to succeed. It's true what they say. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. I think it's important, to, like, nobody bats a thousand, obviously, um, and no matter how smart you are, you will make some number of mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. SpaceX has had many high-profile failures over the years, but that doesn't mean the entire company has closed down in shame. And, and in fact, uh, for SpaceX, I, I, I reserved the capital to, to do three, to have three launch failures. Or, or to, to withstand two launch failures and have the third one be success, sort of three strikes. Um, 
And actually, we had three launch failures. We were just able to scrape enough money together for a fourth flight that succeeded uh, in 2008. No, it just means that Musk and the many expert scientists and engineers who work for him keep trying. Did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Number seven, take risks. Once you've overcome your fear of failure, you'll be unstoppable and be able to take big risks in order to get where you want to be. Musk has specifically cited his willingness to take risks over the years as the key to becoming the man he is today. And in June 2002, he founded Space Exploration Technologies, or SpaceX. Elon was the only funder of the company for those early years. Another incredibly risky move to say, nobody on the planet thinks this idea is financeable. I'm going to fund all of it myself to the tune of almost $100 million, which was the majority of his net worth at the time. He says that the bigger a company grows and the more people are accountable if something goes wrong, the harder it gets to take those kinds of gambles. So make them early and make them bold. If I do things where they have personal risk at this point, I, I risk more than, than my own. Start that small business you think has the potential for success. Begin working on the novel you've always dreamed about. Take up a hobby or sport you've always wanted to try. So I would, I would encourage you to take risks now. Do something bold. Um, you won't regret it. Number six, make room to grow. Musk is perhaps the most famous entrepreneur to demonstrate something called a growth mindset, as opposed to a fixed mindset. Essentially, this means believing that you can learn new skills and further develop existing ones. Somebody could say, um, in fact, people do, uh, that battery packs are really expensive and that's just the way they'll always be because that's the way they've been in the past. Um, you're like, well, no, that's, that's pretty dumb, you know, because if, if, uh, if you applied that reasoning to anything new, that ha then you, you wouldn't be able to, to ever get to that new thing. It allows for innovation and improvement, but also flexibility when a plan doesn't work out and needs to be changed. When I came out to go to Stanford, um, that's what I was going to be doing my grad studies on is, um, is was working on advanced uh, uh, energy storage uh, technologies for electric cars. And then I put that on hold to start an internet company in, in 95 because um, th 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 there does seem to be like a time for particular technologies uh, when they're at uh, a steep point in the inflection curve. These are opportunities to grow yourself and your projects. And that's what having a growth mindset is all about. Be free and always looking for new opportunities, even if they're not the ones you expect. You want to get out that room. Um, and I think the, the, the ones that get out of the room sooner will be better off. Um, I mean, if you, if you uh, look... Is that where the mission to Mars comes in? No. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, communication. It is true that communication is always key. How would people get anything done if they didn't communicate with one another? We really try to minimize the number of offices that we have because doors limit communication. Everyone at the company, with the exception of a few people in like HR and finance, actually um, are, are in cubes. But Elon Musk has his own methods of communication with his employees that set a high standard. It meant basically um, try is not good enough, you need to do and uh, basically results matter, um, and, uh, and to not let things get in the way that most people would be stumbled by. In 2017, an internal Tesla email was released that exemplified Musk's philosophies on communication, as he aimed to cut out the middleman and let different departments talk to each other directly rather than going between managers. This means that problems will get solved faster and more efficiently, which is good for any company. He's also, of course, great at communicating with the public, too, talking about his ideas and opening them up to public criticism. When so, critics say you can't do this, your answer to them is, we've done it. Number four, feedback. Speaking of opening up ideas to public criticism, Musk has always been vocal about the necessity of feedback to make any business or idea work. And this is something that people tend to avoid because mm -hmm. it's, it's painful. painful yeah. um, but. But th I think this is a very common mistake. He's often asked Twitter for opinions on how to tackle various issues, for better or worse, but has been outspoken on the value of both positive and negative feedback. Much is made lately of unrealized gains being a means of tax avoidance, so I propose selling 10% of my Tesla stock. In past interviews, he's talked about this feedback loop, 
and has emphasized that you need to listen to the critics too. One of the biggest challenges I think is making sure you have a corrective feedback loop and then maintaining that corrective feedback loop over time even when people want to tell you exactly what you want to hear. That's a very difficult. It's certainly tempting to ignore negativity and only take on board the criticisms and compliments you already agree with. But doing this will not serve you in the long run. Listening to others is always going to help. This may sound like sort of simple advice, but it's hardly anyone does that. Number three, keep learning. This is one tip that applies to absolutely everybody. You should always keep trying to learn new things about the world and your place in it. Everything is available basically for free. Uh, you can learn anything you want for free. Elon has always been outspoken about this, often putting out reading lists of books that changed his life and that might change yours too. Uh, what you learn from them? Well, I think you learn a lot depending upon you know whose life you're reading about. Um, there, there are lots of lessons in there. I read Isaacson's biography of Jobs, which I thought was quite interesting. And I actually really liked um, his biography of Benjamin Franklin. He's also talked about how you don't need college or a school to keep learning. Official education is, of course, invaluable, but reading books that interest you, watching documentaries you'd otherwise ignore, and even just listening to people with different perspectives are perhaps just as important. People learn and are interested in different things at different paces. So you really want to... Um, Disconnect the whole grade level th thing from the, the subjects. Allow people to progress at the fastest pace that they can or are interested in, in each subject. Develop and nurture an insatiable hunger for knowledge. Like books, TV shows, movies, I mean, they're all, uh, I think, sources of inspiration. Number two, aim high. We want to inspire kids to say that, that one day they want to wear that uniform. They want to, want, they want to wear that spacesuit. Mm -hmm. Um, and get them fired up about, yeah, I want to be an astronaut, I want to, be, I want to work on aerospace engineering, I want to advance space flight. If there's one word that defines Elon Musk above all else, it's ambitious. No matter what you think of his ideas, you can't say they're not aiming high. Literally, in the case of SpaceX. The lesson here is not to limit yourself. As the influential thinker Norman Vincent Peale said, aim for the moon, and even if you miss it, you'll land among the stars. Aiming high means that even when you don't reach those goals, you're still going to accomplish something pretty phenomenal. I mean, as long as uh, people stay super focused on creating the absolute best product or service that really delights their end customer, like, if they stay focused on that, then um, if, if you're, basically if, if, if you get it such that your customers want you to mm. succeed, mm. Then, then you probably will. It's likely that SpaceX will someday reach Mars, but even if it doesn't, look at all the wild successes the company has already had building state-of-the-art rockets. I mean, the long-term aspiration is to develop the technologies necessary to transport a large number of people and cargo to, to Mars um, in order to create a self-sustaining civilization there. And that's really why I started the company. Set goals higher than the result you'll be happy with. I think certainly uh, being focused on something that you're confident will have high value to someone else um, and just being really rigorous in making that assessment. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, be passionate. Elon has said time and time again that he doesn't care about money. His wealth is all tied up in Tesla stock, meaning that if Tesla goes under, so does he. I, I don't really follow the stock that much. I'm, you know, because um, I think sometimes the stock moves for kind of random reasons, mm. and um, you know, if, if that ends up being a mood barometer, then it's, it, you know, it's not a happy life. He's not in this business for the profits. He's there because he's extremely passionate about clean energy and space exploration and wants to make the dreams of abolishing fossil fuels and living on Mars realities. What I really want to try to uh, achieve here is to make Mars seem possible, uh, make it seem as though it's something that we can do in our lifetimes um, and that you can go. Maybe you're not as passionate about Mars as Elon. That's fine. Everybody loves and cares about different things. What's important is that you follow your heart, pursuing careers and hobbies that you're truly invested in. So my motivation, uh, actually for, for all, all my companies, has been that uh, uh, to be involved in, in something that I thought would have a significant effect on the world. Um, 
And when I was in college, there were three areas that I thought would most affect the world. One was the internet, the other was sustainable energy, both production and consumption, and the third was uh, space exploration, particularly making life multiplanetary. So as things have turned out, I've been able to be involved in all three. Passion is what drives Elon Musk towards his successes. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.